morning, friends. Shalom and welcome to Israel. My name is Zev. And though it's only 6 a.m., I'm getting ready to embark on the JLI teens road trip. Got my compass, maps, chumash, an extra coil of rope, just in case. First stop is the Negev, where Jewish history really began. The Negev is the southern region of Israel. The word Negev means dry, which makes sense, because look around, it's a desert here. The Negev desert is huge and covers more than half of Israel. It's a rocky melange of brown, rocky, dusty mountains interrupted by dry riverbeds called wadis. These riverbeds bloom briefly after rain. Oh, am I hot and thirsty? Not even a drop left. You can see that over here in the desert, water is a really precious commodity and nothing can go to waste. Israel is at the forefront of technology, making sure that every single drop counts. Not one drop goes to waste. Today, Israel's water technology is exported all over the world. But the very first Israeli export was belief in one God, and that also came from this region. I've always wondered why here in the Negev, what's so special about this place? And today, we're going to find out. Our first stop is Be'er Sheva. And Avraham comes and dwells in Be'er Sheva. Be'er Sheva was an important stopping point for many, since it was located on ancient trade routes. It was a bridge between three continents, Europe, Asia, and Africa. In this spot, many peoples, cultures, and civilizations collided. It was, and still is, the largest city in the Negev. Be'er Sheva, the old and the new. Just behind me, we have the train tracks from the times of the Turks. And above them, the modern train tracks, connecting Be'er Sheva in a network with the rest of Israel and the world. Here at the gate of the city was the main well, where people would come draw water for drinking purposes, for their livestock. And this, in fact, is how the city gained its name, Be'er Sheva. Difficult to imagine that 4,000 years ago, this was a bustling metropolis. Oh, if these stones could talk. They've seen Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Here our forefathers came and they set up their families, they set up a nation, and from here their message went out onto the world. David Ben-Gurion, the first Prime Minister of Israel, believed in the Negev. He saw it really as the key to the survival of the State of Israel. It was his passion and his dream to turn the wasteland into a flowering oasis. And today, today it's really happening. We're going to be meeting with Itai of the JNF, who's going to show us the JNF River Park project. Hey Itai! Hey, How are you? Good to see you! Welcome to the Beersheva River Park. Talk about making the desert blue. Here they've been taking the dry desert and transforming it into a huge green park, complete with a lake and recreation center. I wonder what Abraham would say. What you see behind me wasn't so green six years ago. It was a dump site. This is very important. We are making a difference. Itai, thank you so much for showing us this project. We're heading more south, deep into the Negev Desert. Whoa, it is hot. This is the sunniest part of Israel. And right now in the afternoon, the sun is at its height. Although water is scarce, the sun is at endless supply, which is why the Negev has become a center the solar industry. We are going to visit my friends at Kibbutz Keturah to learn about the breaking ground of Israel's first solar plant. Hey Yonatan! Good to be in Keturah! This is the start of the Arva Power Company's first commercial solar field in Israel. We are going to put in 80 dunam of solar panels uh, for commercial solar production, of uh, electricity production. So with this, you can. what can you do? You can power a mobile home, a computer, a washing machine, whatever you like. Since the days of Abraham, Israel has been sharing ideas with the world and continues today, helping its neighbors find solutions to the similar climates and problems. We do work with uh, Palestinian and Jordanian partners. We bring students in and we discuss how to create environmental solutions that will be lasting in the area. Recently we've started doing projects in Kenya 
doing biogas digesters, which take um, remains from cows and other uh, large field animals and turn it into methane gas, which can be used for production. So you're taking cow dew and using that to make electricity? Correct. You know, JLI teens, we spent the whole day traveling around Israel, seeing how the desert has been cultivated, how the brown has become green, and I just can't believe it. There are people here who talk about doing things, and there are people who actually live the mission. So I think I understand. Abraham would sit outside his tent in the desert waiting for wayfarers to come past. He'd invite them in, give them something to eat, to drink. And then after dinner, they'd get to talking about the important things in life, like baseball, family values, and what's the meaning of existence. And Abram would teach them about the existence of God. As if on fire, when they left the house of Abraham, they'd go rushing to tell their neighbors, their friends, family, and even strangers. And that way, the message of Abram spread far and wide across the world. I feel like I'm on National Geographic. Shh. Down there grazing are cows and camels. Let's see if we can get any closer to them. 